something to talk to you about might involve a little bit of venting so if you don't like the heat then you might not want to listen to this one this one is about assumption presumption and it's specifically about those individuals that feel like they have a position to tell you what you should or shouldn't do in various situations apropos of nothing hello and welcome to for the quantum grammar shoot podcast i'm your host colin jason i from matthew colin glass you may call me jason in this podcast which is the only podcast of its kind that i'm aware of on the interwebs i will be discussing various topics as viewed through correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax grammar, the wonderful grammar technology brought to the public in 1988 by Colin David Eiffelwin and Colin Miller. And boy, we got a doozy today. Assumption, presumption. People that think they know better than you what you ought to do with your life's decisions and choices. And I have run into my fair share of this especially recently with recent uh, personal events and scenarios that have taken place with various family members and acquaintances and friends who find themselves in various challenging events and scenarios. And then there's always someone who feels like they have a position apropos of nothing, meaning they weren't asked. No one asked them to open their mouths or asked them for counsel or advice. They just basically intrude upon the situation and say, well, what you should do is you should do this. What you ought to do is this. Because what you have to do, what you need to do is this. All you got to do is do this. If you can't tell folks, this is one of my pet peeves. I don't have very many, but this is one of them. Bullying being the other main one. But this this comes as like, it's so presumptuous for someone to do that. Now, if you're in a situation where you have a trusted friend and you ask them, what would you do in this situation? Well, then they can say, well, I would do this or I would do that. See, that's the way I phrase things. If someone asks me something for advice or anything like that, usually the first words out of my mouth will be something like, I'm not one to tell someone what they should or shouldn't do. What I can do is share with you what I did in a similar situation, or I will say, if I put myself in those hypothetical shoes, what I might do in that situation. And that's the best I can do because no one is more qualified to make choices in your life than you are. But you know how it is. Most folks out there, especially in this internet generation, this younger generation, feel like they know what's best for everybody. And if you don't agree with what they say, they get mad, they get triggered, they get butt hurt. If you don't agree with what they think you should do. As if they're an expert not only on their life, but your life as well. And I've seen this happen with, uh, okay, let's say uh, there's an individual I know that is uh, having some health issues, all right? I'm with them every day, pretty much every day. I see them, observe them. I know what they're going through. I go with them to doctor's visits, so on and so forth. I see and can 
have a very good sensation as to what's going on with them and, and where they're headed. And then you get someone else who, the person that I'm around just about every day, this other person is very rarely around at all. Maybe once a week they will see the individual having the health problems or health issues, not problems, issues. Once a week and they're never really around, never really helping in this situation, in the particular scenario. And then when it comes time for <laughs> the individual with the health issues to make choices and decisions, now suddenly the person who's never around has a lot to say, how they think things should be done. And that, that just is so presumptuous with my perception for someone to do that. Someone who's never around, someone who hasn't really done anything for the individual with the health issues, hasn't helped, hasn't offered to help. Matter of fact, the person with the health issues actually did ask this other individual for help. And the individual said, yeah, I'll help. And then at the last minute, they said, no, no, I got to go help somebody else. Sorry, got to go help somebody else. Can't be around. And then all of a sudden, you know, later on, even though they're not around, even though they're far, far away, they feel like they have a position to dictate or make suggestions as to what should or shouldn't happen in the choices the individual with the health issues has to make. That's just one example. And I phrased that as kindly as I possibly can. Because it's freaking ridiculous to me that someone would be so presumptuous to think that they can do something like that. No matter who you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are a stranger. I don't care if you are a family member. If you're not around, you don't get to say things like that. You don't have a position to do that. And if you are around, you still don't really have a position to say anything unless you are asked for your input. And that's another thing. If someone asks you for your input and you give that input to them and they choose not to follow that input, you might get upset about it. Say, well, why did you ask me then? Why did you ask me for my opinion? Why did you ask me for my perception? Why did you ask me for my viewpoint? Why did you ask me for my advice if you weren't going to follow it anyways? You might feel some sort of way about it. But really, do you have a position to feel that way about it? Because they're asking you for input. They're not saying to you, hey, can you please tell me what to do? Because I don't know what to do. And if you tell me what to do, I will 100% follow what you say to the letter, to the T, and uh, we'll all be happy. No, no one ever says that. They're just looking for different angles to see if there's something they may have missed. They probably already actually have their mind made up about what they're going to do. They're just asking you to, to be sure about it. Or conversely, some people will ask people, hey, what do you think about this? Just to see if they can get some cooperation someone who thinks similarly to the way they think. And it makes them feel better about the choices they're going to make. Either which way, if I give someone, someone advice, they ask me for advice, and they don't follow that advice, I'm not going to get butt hurt if they don't follow it. But a lot of people do for some reason. It's like the other side of the coin. Someone, you know, the side of the coin where someone's so presumptuous that they think they have a position to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. And then the other side of the coin is when someone actually does ask for advice or counsel and then it's given to them and then they don't follow it and then the person who gave the advice gets angry because you didn't do what they suggested that you should do. That they told you, well, you should do this, this, and this and you decide not to do it. Now they're mad at you. Because you didn't do what they said. They feel somehow their ego is hurt. Either which way, someone's ego is going to get hurt in that scenario. Because anyone who's presumptuous enough to think that they have a position to tell you what you should or shouldn't do apropos of nothing 
has an ego. Obviously, they think enough of themselves to think that they know better what's best for you than you yourself do, if that makes sense. I hope it does. And I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there who feel this same way that I feel. I think the difference is that while people feel the same way I do, they don't practice what they preach. They still presume and assume that they can tell other people what they should or shouldn't do. It's so challenging to navigate around people like that, especially if they're quote-unquote loved ones. It's hard not to call them to the carpet and say, do you realize this is what's going on here? Because they're going to fall back on, well, I don't mean any harm. My heart's in the right place. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help. And then they, they might get mad at you for, uh, for saying that to them. It's like, man, who the hell asked you anyways? I mean, of course, you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't want to say it quite like that. But like, if I ask you, okay, you, you, can, you can give me that advice. You can give me that uh, suggestion. But if I don't, STFU. As a wise man once said, mind your own business. Because no one can mind your business like you can. And I feel like the majority of folks out there today do not possess this capacity. They just don't. And they feel, and this is my perception, it's my view, that it makes them feel good to exercise their ego to tell other people what they should and shouldn't do. They think that they're very smart, they're very intelligent, that they know what's best for your life, my life, and everybody else's life. Even if most times in their own life they don't really follow their own advice. You'll find that too. That That's a dichotomy. That's a contradiction. <laughs> they got all kinds of advice for everybody else. They know what's best, you know, relationship-wise, parenting-wise. They have all these answers of what you should or shouldn't do. And then you look at their life and it's like, whoa. Why, whoa. Well, if you don't practice what you preach, then how much value do your words actually hold? Not much. Really, they don't. Your words hold no value if you don't practice what you preach. If you don't actually do the things that you're telling other people that they should do. So there you have it. The value of something is what you ascribe to it. And that's assumption and presumption, man. In a nutshell, this is a, a pet peeve of mine. And that's why I, I give Kuliana the way I do in the comments field to people who say, you should do this. You ought to do that. Jason, don't let the, don't let the trolls knock you off your square. Jason, don't let this bother you. As if, like, number one, they're assuming something bothers me. And number two, they're telling me what I should and shouldn't do. Why do people feel like they need to do that? Why? Well, I answered your question. It's an exercise in ego. That's my viewpoint anyway. That's my perception of it. It's an exercise in ego. Maybe they're, you know, struggling in their own lives and they feel powerless and it gives them a sense of power to be able to think that they're helping someone else and they know what's best for someone else. Um... So, <laughs> that's my best guess anyways. Um, but I just felt the need to get this out there. Because there are a lot of you folks out there listening right now. Who I hope, I hope, and I hope that this sinks into your psyche. And that you cognize what I'm saying. Because this will help you. If you're, if you're conscious of this, if you're cognizant of this. And you do it, which you probably do. 
You probably do. Hey, I've done it too. I've just become more cognizant and more conscious of it the past few years. So I've cultivated humility and I've tried my best to stop doing it. Now, someone might say, oh, you, Jason, you're telling people that they shouldn't presume and assume. Aren't you telling them what they should or shouldn't do? The difference is this is a knowledge cultivation station. This is a knowledge cultivation channel. If you're coming here to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and uh, all elements are peripheral to that, this is part of that teaching. There is no assumption presumption in quantum grammar. It's all about the facts. There's no modification of facts. And so this is part of it. This is part of learning that. And you're here by choice, listening. I mean, I'm sure no one's holding you down or twisting your arm behind your back or holding a firearm to your head and forcing you to do this. So you're here by choice, probably, because you want to learn something about this. And I'm sharing my knowledge with you. So that's different. You're here by choice. By you coming here to listen to me or watch my videos, you're open to being taught. I mean, most of you, I would say the good majority of you are here for that reason. There may be a few folks here that uh, are not here for that. They have more malicious, malevolent intent or volition. Uh, they just want to listen and maybe create a video and try and cut it up and edit it to make it sound like I'm saying something I'm not saying or to try and pick out little things to criticize or badmouth me or slander me in some way. But those type of folks, they don't get any viewers on their channel anyway, so it really doesn't make any difference to me. And There's no damage done, no harm done. I don't really give a shit one way or the other. Uh, but the majority of you are here, I think, to learn this wonderful grammar and the psychology behind it. So... This one is for you. It's a shorter one than usual, but I think it's probably one of the most important ones that I've done. I appreciate you joining me, and uh, hopefully see you in the next one.